Hey, welcome back to Dashboard December. Today, I'm gonna to show you the main floor view of my dashboard, including all the rooms on the main floor. I'm also gonna cover all the code that drives all the cool stuff that my dashboard does that makes it my dashboard. Let's get started. Even though the first two parts of this series didn't seem to be very popular, I'm going to keep going with it. So I really do hope that you guys find some value in it and that you enjoy the content. Now, if you're just joining me in this video, this is part three of a multi-part series. Since the videos build upon one another, I suggest starting with part one, which is in the cards somewhere up here. But hey, don't let me tell you what to do. Okay, first up, we need to take a look at some more code in my configuration.yaml file. The important bits here are these binary sensors toward the bottom of the page. On lines 478 to 480, master humidity compares the humidity level in my master bathroom with the humidity level in my master bedroom. If the bathroom is more than 10 points higher than the bedroom, this sensor turns on. I use this for an automation that we're going to briefly touch on in the next video. 481 through 492 are all the same thing, just different sensors. They turn on if my refrigerators get above 47 degrees or if my freezers get above 25 degrees. Isn't 47 degrees a little warm? Look, I'm not here to argue about temperatures. This is how I wrote it and I'm just showing you. If you're not happy with the temperature, maybe be whatever you want for your setup. Moving right along, that does it for configuration.yaml, so let's get right into the dashboard. Here's my main floor view. If you've kept up with the series, this will look familiar to you. If you haven't watched the other videos, well, you'll watch them. I'm not explaining it all again. Here you can see I've got a title card that says main floor, and then a line of text that tells me how many lights are on on this floor, then a bunch of mushroom chips that give me some quick info at a glance, namely temperatures and leak sensors. Then there are buttons for each room or area on the main floor of the house. Let's take a look at the code for this page. First up is a vertical stack, of course. Inside the vertical stack, we've got a mushroom title card to display the main floor to make navigation easier so I know where I am in the dashboard. Then we've got the lights on code. This leverages the sensors I covered in part two of the series. If there is one light on, then set the output to light on, otherwise set it to lights on. Then display the value of main floor lights on, which is just a number, followed by the value of output, which we set using that if else statement. Next up is a mushroom chips card with a back button, followed by the kitchen temperature sensor, then the parlor temp sensor, and then the scullery temp sensor. What the hell is a scullery? It's like a pantry, but with a sink and ovens and whatnot. Basically, it's a mini kitchen. Anyway, following that, I've got a leak sensor for the kitchen sink. For each of the leak sensors, I use the same code to control the icon and the icon color. If there's no water leak, then the icon is MDI water off, else it's MDI water. Icon color similarly is green if the sensor is dry, otherwise it's red. After the kitchen sink leak sensor is the prep sink leak sensor, then the half bath leak sensor. Code for the icon and the icon color of those is more of the same. Next up, we've got a horizontal stack. The first button is for the garage. The icon for this is MDI garage and the icon color is controlled by this bit of code here. If the interior garage light is on, then set the icon color to yellow. The tap action is to navigate to the garage view. Long pressing, or holding the button as it's called in Home Assistant, turns off the lights in the garage. After the garage is the rear foyer. The icon color here checks the two lights in the rear foyer, and if either are on, then the button turns yellow. As with all the other room buttons in my dashboard, holding the button turns off all the lights in the rear foyer. However, you'll notice here that the action isn't just toggle like the garage, since there are multiple lights. In this case, the action is to call the home assistant.turn off service, and then I specify which entities it should turn off, namely switch.rear foyer and switch.rear hallway. Then we've got another horizontal stack, and the first button on this row is the scullery. More of the same. If the light's on, turn the button yellow. Hold the button to turn off all the lights in the room, which in this case is only one, so I'm being lazy and using the entity toggle method instead of the service call method. For uniformity's sake, I do want to switch everything to the service call method. I just haven't had time. Maybe one day. Next up is the half bath. 
Set the icon to a toilet, make the card yellow if the light's on, and the hold action is, uh, you guessed it, turn the light off. Then comes kitchen. Set the icon to a knife, and since we've got multiple lights in the kitchen, we need to check them both to see if we should turn the icon yellow. And of course that means we need to use the service call to turn them both off. The parlor also has multiple lights, so we need to check all three to see if we should color the icon, and we'll turn them all off again using home assistant.turn off. Then comes another horizontal stack. Shocking, I know. First on this stack is the dining room. Once again, we've got multiple lights to check for color. Because of the multiple lights, again, I'm using call service to turn them all off when the button's held down. Next to the dining room, we've got the front foyer. Three lights to check there, so three entities to turn off using call service when you hold the button. Come down another horizontal stack and you'll find the sunroom. Four entities here to make the button yellow means four things to turn off using call service. Last on this page is the den, which also has four entities. That's the last button on this page, so now let's dig into the individual rooms and see how I set those up. First up is the garage. We start with a title card, of course, and then a chips card. The chips card first has a back button, then the temperature and humidity, followed by contact sensors for my front and rear service doors. If the doors are closed, I color the icon green, otherwise it's red. I use a Cara, Zigbee, and contact sensors for everything, and I find that they're cheap and they work great. Further, aside from when the devs made some crazy changes back in like 2023-05, I think it was, I also found them to be rock solid, as long as I change the batteries before they die. Next is a horizontal stack that has buttons for the interior lights and the garage door. Nothing terribly shocking here. If the light's on, turn the button yellow, tap action is toggle. For the garage door, I've got a handful of if-then-else statements to control the icon, and the icon is green when the door is closed. If it's not closed, change it to red. Then, of course, is another horizontal stack. This is two displays for different properties of the same thing. The first is a power button for a sound-off outlet that I plug the charger into for my boat, and the other is a display that tells me how many amps the charger is drawing through that outlet. I just added this to the dashboard, and I'm not done setting it up just yet. However, since it's winter time, my boat's in storage, and I haven't been able to mess around with it, so that'll be a project for spring. That does it for the garage page. Next up, let's take a look at the rear foyer. The top of the view is pretty standard. Title card, back button, followed by a chip for the contact sensor on the rear entry door. Same as before, if the door is closed, the icon's green, if not, red. Next is a horizontal stack with just two buttons on it, one for each light. They're both the same. Set the name under the primary field, set the icon, the entity, color them yellow if they're on. Easy. Then we've got the scullery. Title card, followed by a chips card, Chips has a back button, then temp and humidity, followed by a contact sensor. Then two chips for fridge and freezer temp. And these chips leverage the binary sensors I showed you at the beginning of this video for high temp under the color section. If the high temp binary sensor is on, set the color to red, otherwise it's blue. Below the chips, we've also got a single light. Again, if it's on, color the icon yellow. Pretty straightforward. The half bath is also pretty straightforward. Title card, back button, then a chip for the water leak sensor. If it's dry, icon's water off, else the icon is water. For the icon color, green if it's dry, otherwise red. Below the chips are two buttons, one for the light and one for the fan. Same, same. If it's on, color it yellow. Easy peasy. Now we've got the kitchen. Lots of stuff going on here, not all of which we're gonna cover today. I'm skipping home audio stuff in this series, remember? First up, we've got the title card, which just says kitchen. Next are a bunch of chips cards, starting with the back button. Then we've got temperature and humidity for the kitchen, followed by the fridge and freezer temps. The fridge and freezer leverage those binary template sensors. If everything's normal, the icons are blue. If either of them are high temp, then they turn red. There's a couple water leak sensors for the main sink and the prep sink, which are no water and green when dry and water and red when wet. Then there's a contact sensor on the refrigeration and a contact sensor on the exterior door to the back deck. Following that up is a horizontal stack with two buttons, one for the overhead lights and one for the lock on the deck door. Next is a single outlet. This card uses the code for if it's on, turn it yellow. Next is the home audio controls for the kitchen zone, which we're skipping, remember? Lastly, there's a camera in the kitchen, which comes from Blue Iris. 
Then it's on to the parlor. Standard beginning, title card, back button, temp and humidity. Then we've got three buttons, each on a different line. The top bulb for the floor lamp, the bottom bulb for the floor lamp, and an outlet. Currently, the Christmas tree is plugged into that. After the parlor is the dining room. Again, same start. Title card, back button. Then we've got a couple buttons for the chandelier and the outlet. The chandelier is a dimmer, so we don't have to do anything there since it's a light instead of a switch. And then there's an outlet, which uses the same old code to turn it yellow when it's on. Then a home audio zone for the dining room, and it's onto the front foyer. Here we've got the same start with title and back, but this time with the addition of a contact sensor for the front door. Green if it's closed, red if it's not. Next up is a row with three lights. The main front foyer light, then an outlet, and finally the chandelier in the front foyer. All three levers the same code to turn them yellow if they're on. Last on this page is the front door lock. Not much to this one. Next up is the sunroom. Same setup, title card, back button, and then we've got buttons for the track lights and a ceiling fan, both of which are dimmers, so we don't have to do anything special except flip the little switch for brightness control and pick our color. Below that are a couple of outlets, both of which leverage the same code to turn them yellow if they're on. Last up is the den. This starts with the old familiar title and back button. After that, we've got a horizontal stack with three buttons, one for the ceiling fan and light, one for the fireplace fan, and one for an outlet. All three of these, too, use that same code to turn them yellow if they're on. The next row has a dimmer switch for the accent lights, so here all we have to do again is pick a color and flip the brightness control switch, and that button is good to go. Note that this is a switch, not a bulb, so there is no color control on it. Then we've got an audio zone and the den camera. We're skipping the audio, and cameras are nothing too fancy, so we'll skip that too in the interest of time. The code is identical to the kitchen camera, just a different name. Holy crap, that was a lot. I did try to go pretty quick in order to keep the time down here, so hopefully I didn't lose you. But hey, that's what pause and rewind are for, right? All right, that's gonna wrap it up. Smack like if you enjoyed this, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that too so you don't miss the rest of the videos in this exciting series. Drop me a line in the comments and let me know what you think about my dashboard, or let me know if you're learning, or let me know if you've got any ideas for improvement. I first created this dashboard about a year or so ago, and I've just kept adding to it as more and more stuff got connected in the house. I'm really not sure how I feel about it anymore. I'm starting to get kind of itchy for something different, but I really don't have a lot of free time right now, what with the holidays and a new little baby and my day job keeping me super busy on top of that. So maybe after the new year, things will calm down some. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyhow, if you'd like downloadable code, access to ad-free videos, and a whole lot more, please consider becoming a patron. I'm certainly not a full-time YouTuber, so any support that I get from you guys really goes a long way towards letting me know that you enjoy my content. I use that to get new smart gadgets to connect to the house that I can figure out and show you guys. So win-win. Check the description for a link. To all my current patrons, thank you. You guys are the best. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you liked this episode's t-shirt. And I hope that I was able to teach you something new and give you some ideas to improve your dashboard. Thanks for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?